Welcome to this 33rd episode of SpaceX in the News. We have plenty to get caught up on today. We're going to start things off with Starhopper and Starship in Boca Chica, Texas and Cocoa, Florida. We'll briefly mention Starlink, then we'll talk about Mr. Steven's sex change. We'll debrief last night's STP-2 Falcon Heavy launch, then we'll finish things off going over some upcoming flights. Let's get started. So Starhopper is still undergoing pressure testing on the launch pad at Boca Chica, Texas as it waits for its SN6 Raptor engine to arrive. Elon tweeted the other day that Raptor liberated its oxygen turbine stator, which appears to be a mechanical and not a metal combustion failure. So we need to update the design and replace some parts. Production is ramping exponentially though. SN6 is almost done, aiming for an engine every 12 hours by the end of the year. Up until a few days ago, SN5 was a Raptor engine that was expected to take Hopper up on its upcoming flights. These design fixes to the engine are obviously slowing down the process a little bit, so SN6 is now slated to be the next engine to come onto Starhopper. But according to this tweet, Raptor engine production is supposed to start ramping up here in the next few months. A Raptor engine coming through the assembly line every 12 hours equates to about 500 a year. And since Raptor produces 200 tons of force, the cost per ton would be about $1,000. But the thing is, Raptor is designed for about 1,000 flights with little maintenance. So cost per ton over time would actually be closer to about $1. In our last episode, Starhopper was supposed to have its engine on and ready to fly on June 24th, However, that's not the case anymore. According to the Cameron County website, temporary closures for State Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach have been nixed of specific dates, instead just reading 2019. So it's more realistic that Starhopper will now be lifting off sometime next month. But I guess some good news to walk away from this whole conversation is that the FAA has approved SpaceX's request to take Starhopper up to an altitude that does not exceed 25 meters above ground level. This permit expires in one year. It seems like progress is more obvious on the Starship front. The second haul body segment of the Mark 1 Starship in Boca Chica, Texas is growing steadily. And my good friend Boca Chica Maria has captured some footage of the SpaceX employees dragging parts of the ship around the construction yard and finishing up the construction for the windbreaking structure for Starship. The nose cone in the upper portion of Starship is still undergoing grinding to smooth out its exterior. But that little gap anomaly is still there where the nose cone meets the rest of the ship. And it looks like we can finally settle the debate on whether or not that's supposed to be there. A member of the SpaceX Boca Chica group on Facebook recently wrote that her husband was down there working on them and that this is all new to everyone. You know, I've said it a few times and I'll say it again on this channel, myself and my subscribers totally appreciate all the hard work these SpaceX employees are doing down there in Boca Chica, Texas, as well as Cocoa, Florida. I know as an absolute certainty that I couldn't even come close to doing as good of a job as they're doing, especially with all the crazy weather they've been having out there, whether it's heat waves or storms, no thank you. But transitioning to the Mark II Starship in Cocoa, Florida, she's looking really pretty and taller. And even more segments of the Starship have been seen being constructed inside the tent. And it comes as a surprise, but even a Raptor engine has been spotted on site. My educated guess as to why the engine's there is for fit checks maybe, but at the same time, I haven't seen the lower portion of the Starship being built yet. But you know what else has been spotted on site? Or should I say who else? Elon Musk himself. He wrote in on a Tesla to give a live update at Starmus. And he tweeted that as soon as the Starship reaches orbit, they'll start allowing reservations for people to go to Mars. But he also said the moon is the first stop. During a recent Tesla shareholder event, Elon made it perfectly clear that the Starlink constellation can support no more than three to 5% of the global population. The main value of Starlink is providing low latency, high bandwidth access to basically rural or semi-rural areas, uh, places that don't have connectivity right now. So I think it's it's like quite, quite a great system, but it's able to serve like three to 5% of people in the world. Now that's a lot of people because of all the people in the world. It's actually not ideal for high density cities. It's really to to serve the, 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 uns, the, the unserved or poorly served is what Starlink's about. If you're curious to see what areas of the earth will be covered first when this constellation program starts, I suggest you check out this video by Mark Hanley. He does a great job rendering the visuals and explaining what exactly is going on. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out that video. So here's some news you won't get anywhere else. Mr. Steven just had a sex change. The ship was bought out by another company and renamed Go Miss Tree. But we'll get right back to him her in a moment. Let's debrief the other night's Falcon Heavy launch of STP-2. The third Falcon Heavy vehicle to ever launch did so on Tuesday morning at 2.30 a.m. and successfully landed its two reused side boosters. This is the first time that a Falcon Heavy rocket ever reused side boosters before, but unfortunately, once again, the center core didn't make it. Although the drone ship was more than 700 miles off the East Coast, the live video did manage to capture the center core coming in hot to the drone ship, of course, I still love you, but in the last seconds before landing, the center core went sideways and exploded on the surface of the ocean. 
SpaceX has not yet successfully recovered a center core booster. However, they did manage to do something else that they haven't been able to do before. The transsexual boat Gomez Tree caught its first fairing. And it was broadcasted during the live stream that the other half of the fairing was spotted by another SpaceX vessel. But the news that matters the most about this launch is that all 24 satellites deployed successfully. The payload customers range from the DoD, Air Force, NASA, and even 152 dead people. Yes, that's right, the Falcon Heavy did have humans on board, However, it was just little pill-sized capsules of their cremated remains. This launch was especially challenging because the upper stage was subjected to four separate upper stage engine burns, three separate deployments, and a final propulsive passivation maneuver, which totaled a mission duration of over six hours. So I offer my congratulations to any SpaceX employees watching this. Now concerning future flights, SpaceX was recently rewarded a South Korean launch contract, which brings SpaceX even closer to their goal of 18 to 21 launches for the year of 2019. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine recently admitted that the crew Dragon anomaly that happened a couple of months ago definitely set the crewed program back a few months. However, new information from both NASA and the U.S. Government Accountability Office confirmed that SpaceX is currently targeting Crew Dragon's first launch with astronauts on board no earlier than November 15, 2019. The next SpaceX launch is slated for July 21st. It's CRS-18, a resupply mission to the International Space Station. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next one, Godspeed. Big shout out and thank you to all my cloud licking patrons. If it wasn't for them, this show would not be what it is today. And if you enjoy watching these videos, please consider becoming a patron yourself. For as little as $1, you can get access to more cloud licking content. There's a link in the description. And hey, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode, and give this video a like. God bless you.